Welcome everybody to our fourth session in the Home Office Clip Series on Immune System Research. My name is Michael Kapinski. I'm Marketing and Product Manager with Beckman Kuta Life Sciences, being responsible for our clinical research reagents for flow cytometry. In the last broadcast of the Home Office Clip Series, I stressed the importance of sound marker selection based on widely accepted scientific opinion, not to forget the impact of reagent manufacturing quality standards, to assure consistent performance from lot to lot to lot. In this session, I would like to focus on biology, on a population of T cells whose discovery has profoundly changed our understanding of how the immune system operates immunity and tolerance regulatory T-cells, typically abbreviated as T-Rags, while a number of other regulatory cells, such as regulatory B-cells, regulatory macrophages, have been identified. Meanwhile, t rex continue to be the rock stars on the regulatory stage. Requiring a nuclear staining protocol, t rex analysis typically inclines a lengthy preparation prelude not only consuming time, but also being difficult to standardize as variability accumulates with each washing step. Not so with the Duraclone IMT racket. That also gives us back a lot of time with a turnaround of around two hours only and three washing steps only. But before we go into the workflow details, let us take a step back first. What is so special about T-Rex? When thinking about T-cells, our first immediate thought might be about antigen-specific immune responses. T-cell help for B-cell response and other immune cells. Killing of aberrant cells and proliferation of reactive clones. But would nature put such a big foot on the gas pedal if there was no break? Our T-cells are not perfect in identifying the right targets. They might attack innocent cell antigens and unleash overshooting inflammatory reactions. Our immune system needs the ability to balance between immunity and tolerance depending on the specific requirements of the immune situation. In the scheme we are seeing here, we either need to boost T-Rex function or conventional T-cell function, together with blocking the respective antagonistic function, depending on whether more tolerance or a boost of the immune response is needed. By which mechanisms can T-Rex help to maintain that magic balance. This scheme provides an overview on currently proposed mechanisms and by doing so it gives us an idea how to identify these cells. The most prominent feature besides CD3 and CD4 expression, which is not shown here, is FOXP3 expression. And we also note its location inside the cell in the nucleus as it is a transcription factor promoting the expression of proteins needed to exert the shown immune suppressive mechanisms. Apart from suppressor cytokines, cytolytic enzymes and ligands interacting with dendritic cells, I would like to highlight in the upper right box named metabolic disruption, the low affinity IL2 receptor CD25 and the actor ATPA CD39 as surface antigens that are easily accessible by flow cytometry to identify those cells. We now already have identified CD3 
CD4, FOXP3, CD25 and CD39 as phenotypic features of T-Rex. But are all T-Rex the same? Or are there subpopulations maybe that would warrant a more detailed analysis? analysis? And if so, do we need additional markers for that purpose? The scheme on the left illustrates that by analyzing the level of FOXP3 and CD45RA expression, we already can discriminate three fractions of T-Rex, which can be further subdivided by assessment of Helios expression, another transcription factor believed to be associated with the stability of the T-Rex identity. Taken these features together, the Duraclone IM T-Rex antibody panels identifies FOXP3 CD25 plus T helper cells from whole blood, which is supported by the pan leukocyte marker CD45, including subpopulations defined by the expression levels of FOXP3, of Helios, CD45RA and CD39, the latter being functionally involved into immune suppression by metabolic deprivation. The selection of markers obviously is concordant with current opinion, contributing to the experimental rigor of Duraclone IMT-REC. You might recall experimental rigor from earlier sessions as an enhanced mode of standardization. This is a perfect link to talk about the workflow of Duraclone IMT-REC, which is all about reduction of human error and methodical bias. By optimizing the IMT-REC antibody panel for use with whole blood and the Perfix intercellular staining kit, we have removed the need for PBMC isolation, fixable viability staining and blocking of FC receptors common to typical protocols. Thus, the complete preparation procedure, including surface antigen and transcription factor staining, fits into two hours and requires no more than three washing steps, reducing the uncontrolled loss of cells and not to forget, eliminating errors related to antibody pipetting. I hope I could illustrate the rationale behind the marker selection and the exceptionally productive and robust workflow of the Duraclone IM T-Rec antibody panel seasoned with a couple of interesting facts about T-Rex. Also for the next session, I would like to stay with T-cells, considering the principal types of T-cell receptors, as well as the repertoire of T-cell receptor subtypes. So please join me also for the fifth session in the Home Office clip series on Duraclone IM TCRs and the TCR V Better Repertoire Kit. Hope to see you again soon in my home office sessions. Mm -hmm.